Hey friend, welcome to On The Daily. I'm your host, Danielle McCleary, and I am a quantum business coach. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm a multi six figure entrepreneur, co founder, and president of Hype You Media and CEO of Danielle on the Daily Coaching. What I'm really interested in is helping you live a life and have a business that is a full body yes. So, through all of my education and all of my experience, I'm bringing you two episodes a week where I will guide you and give you the tools necessary to scale a massive, sustainable, and sexy business using your intuition, wealth energetics, and human design. What we can call it is business biohacking. So if you're down for that, then I say let's frickin' go. I'm so glad you're here. Hi fam, welcome back. Happy Tuesday, or of course, whenever it is that you're hearing this. This is a woo-woo episode, which I don't even understand why people say like things are woo-woo because at the end of the day, like we were all born these like incredibly spiritual beings and we learn to not be (laughs) as we get older. But when we're born and we come to this planet, we're actually very spiritual beings. And so I've never really understood the term like, oh, that's really woo-woo because all it means is that you're tapped back into who you were when you entered this world. Um, anyway, that's another story for another day. Okay, let's jump in because this is a good one. I want to talk about some things that started to happen when I started to like raise my vibration and raise my frequency and kind of like tell you about how that has shifted my business, how that shifted my mindset, how that shifted my relationships, all the things. And it's it's interesting because this week, uh, Breezy and I will be in California for Stagecoach, which is California's like huge country music festival. It's basically like country Coachella. So the first two weeks are Coachella. And then in the same location after weekend two of Coachella is Stagecoach. And it's the same fairground. It's the same grounds. It's the same idea, big festival, hundreds of thousands of people and all country music. So definitely my jam. And I... I always say like, I would rather be at stagecoach being like, you know, interacted with by drunk men in overalls that have the American flag printed on them. I would rather do that than hang out with 13 year olds on Molly like any day. (laughs) So that is why that's one of the reasons why we go to stagecoach. But, um, I, I don't really talk about this that much because it's not, I don't think it's that interesting. Um, but it is, it is interesting. And it's also like kind of a hot topic right now, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't drink and I would not say like, oh, I'm 100% sober. And this did not come from like, this didn't everyone, like, I think when people say like, oh, I don't drink, everyone automatically assumes it's because at one point you had a problem. And I've actually never been a big drinker. It's just never been something I've done. However, Um, I really don't enjoy alcohol and um, I don't find any need for it. I actually don't really, I don't use any substances like there. I've smoked pot and, you know, I could probably count the number of times I've done that on two hands, Um, but I've never done any drugs. I don't really dabble in plant medicine and it's just never been something I'm called to. So this is not me being like, I am so much better than that. That's not it at all. It's just never been something I've been called to. And so Uh, I don't drink and I tell people that and they're like, but you go to music festivals, like how you drink at music festivals, clear, surely you'll, you do that at music festivals. And I'm like, no, I don't. I go to music festivals completely 100% sober, uh, which I guess kind of trips a lot of people out. However, I, it's just kind of my thing, but I think this kind of sparked this, like our wedding was in March and I was completely sober for our wedding. I don't drink at other people's weddings. Like I don't drink on family occasions. Like I just don't, it's just not what I do. And, um, and a lot of that started when I really started to feel my frequency rise and I started to raise my vibration. Um, so that is like the first, I guess, if I'm talking about like the things that has happened since I've raised my frequency, Number one would be that I don't feel the need or the desire to partake in anything that's going to lower my frequency because here, and this is not me telling you not to drink like at all. I just know there's so many people who are sober curious. I think that's what we're calling it. And I like to speak on it whenever I can, because there is, it is a fact 
everybody thinks that when they drink, their vibration is higher, right? Like we say like, oh, good vibes only. Like we're all drinking tonight, good vibes. But if we're talking from a scientific perspective, alcohol actually lowers your vibrational frequency. And you can track vibrational frequency just like you can track any frequency, right? But it actually does lower your frequency because when you are impaired, whether that be through alcohol, drugs, whatever, when you are impaired, you are not thinking at your highest. You are not making sound decisions. You are not in touch with your intuition. You are your emotional soundboard is not operating at its peak. So therefore your frequency is lower. So it actually does the opposite of raising the vibes. It actually lowers the vibes, which is why I don't know if you've ever felt this. And this is another thing that started to happen when I raised my frequency is I started to feel the energy of every room I walk into. And this has a lot to do with the fact that I'm a non-emotional in human design which means that I'm an empath. So I feel energy all the time. doesn't matter what room I walk into. I can feel like I can feel the vibe of that space. Uh, but when you stop partaking in substances at in places, especially where there's a lot of it going on. So a wedding, a party, a music festival, right? Everybody is in a really great mood at the beginning, right? Like everyone is, is really, the energy is, is high and sociable and friendly. And then as like the night goes on, sure, it might get rowdier. People might be quote, having more fun, but ultimately there's a lot more emotions, like tensions run high. There's like a, a weird air in, like there's a weird energy in the air. And that's quite literally because the collective frequency is decreasing. So when I decided like, I was going to actually tap into my energy frequency and I was actually going to raise my vibration. Um, the need to be drinking or I've never done drugs. So that stayed not interested, but, um, I really just ju didn't ever have the need for alcohol. And so that's something that happened. Um, another thing that happened, uh, and listen, if like sober curious is something that you're playing with, there are so many great alcohol free spirits out there. There's one, I am not sponsored by them at all, although I should be because we've been buying a lot of it. It's called Hyo, H-I-Y-O. It's like adaptogens and um, nootropics and it's like really good for you, but it's uh, completely alcohol free and it, it, there's low sugar. It tastes amazing. Um, I definitely recommend Hyo. Uh, there's also like cool CBD seltzers you can buy. Uh, obviously like Olipop, Poppy, those like prebiotic and probiotic sodas, those all work really well. There's so many different things that you can drink that, that like will mimic the action of alcohol without actually lowering your frequency. Um, and so just start to, you know, search around, do your homework. And if you're interested, like just try, I mean, making like fun mocktails is super fun. Like I love making mocktails and, I think once you get past like the habit of it, it actually becomes really easy. Um, the second thing that started to happen, I kind of already mentioned it, is like you start to feel everything. Your energy, your like aura expands and you actually start to be able to feel people a lot more, which can be great. And it can also be very overwhelming. So I remember when I started to like really raise my consciousness, I would get so annoyed by people and ultimately this is why we had, I felt like we had to move out of Los Angeles because the energy of Los Angeles was so dense and we were coming out of the pandemic where everyone was like, just so afraid and so high anxiety. And there was so much stress. And I felt that so deeply that it was like manifesting as like sickness in my body, which was crazy. And so we made the decision to like move out of the city. And then ultimately we moved out of the state as well. But you just start to feel things bigger. And this has been really cool for my business because I actually can like take a temperature check on my clients a lot better now that I'm so tapped into my frequency and my energy and like the, the, the energy that I'm putting out as well as the energy that I'm taking in. So I think one, when your frequency 
increases and you start to really expand your consciousness, you start to feel things a lot deeper, which means you can also set better boundaries and you can get clearer on who has access to your energy. So it can be a really good thing and it can be really overwhelming at first, which it was for me. I was like super overwhelmed by just how deep I felt other people. And then eventually I was able to like, well, I call it shields up. Like I was able to put my shields up and really just like focus on the energy that I was putting out and the energy that I was putting, letting back in. That was really helpful. Um, another thing that really started to happen was I had less friends. (laughs) That sounds so crazy. Like (laughs) We say that like, oh, I have less friends. But honestly, it wasn't even like a bad thing. It was like there was this natural cleansing and purging that happened when I started to raise my frequency where I no longer had capacity for certain relationships that I had had in the past. And other relationships had less capacity for me because we just weren't operating in the same frequency. It's like if you tried to play like two songs that had nothing to do with one another at the same time, really loud, it would get really, really confusing and everyone would get really frustrated. That's kind of what happens when you start to increase and like expand your consciousness and raise your frequency is you other frequencies like don't match. And it's a really good time to kind of like do that energetic purge and cleanse and you know, be willing to cut the cord from certain relationships. So I cut the cord from a lot of relationships when this started to happen. And it ultimately has been really great for me because I've been able to strengthen my friendships and my relationships with the people that I do match on an energetic level and that do match me. And it's been a really beautiful process as well as, you know, very bittersweet. And like, there's been some grieving and some mourning that's happened, but ultimately it's been a really positive experience for my business, for my life, for my marriage, all the things. Um, Another thing that really you really like, you kind of break the matrix. Like as you expand your consciousness and raise your frequency or your vibration and like, listen, the highest of the vibrational frequencies is love, gratitude, right? Love and gratitude and joy. And so when I say like raising your frequency, raising your vibration, I mean like you're focusing more in on love. You're focusing more in on gratitude and joy, and you're focusing less on the lower frequencies, which are guilt, shame, judgment, you know, those kind of scarcity, lack, those kind of frequencies. Like you stop focusing on those and you start to really ground in and anchor into love, joy, and gratitude. And so as I started to do this, I broke the matrix and like all of a sudden, nothing that the government told me, nothing that health officials told me, nothing that the media told me like mattered anymore. Like I don't even, I don't care what the government says. I don't care what the like public health officials say. I don't, I like, I don't tap into it. I don't like, I see right through all of the like propaganda and the like media manipulation that happens. Like I see right through it now. And if this is happening to you and you're starting to be like, all of our news is bullshit. All of our media is bullshit. Everyone is paid. Everything is like, you know, and then you start to see the government is like two wings of the same bird. Like that's the thing that like, really, I was like, wow, there's something shifting inside of me because I used to be like, so, 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 so like planted in my feelings. And if somebody else like didn't believe what I believed, oh my gosh, I would like, I can't hang out with you. I can't be around you. You're a horrible person. Like all the things. And then when you start to really raise your frequency and when I started to really raise my frequency, I was like, oh, wow, I actually don't care what that person believes. And I actually don't get triggered by other people's like political, religious, like human human, uh, beliefs. Like I just don't. Um, I became so much more grounded in what I believed and the truth that I could see. And it like became so much clearer to me. This is a really hard one to explain, but if you, if you are going through it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like I, I am unshakable. Like you cannot trigger me. And I used to be so like everybody, like if your frequency is still really low, you're triggered by everything, everything, everything triggers you. Everything feels like an attack. Everything feels like that person, there's something wrong with that person because they don't see things the way that everyone else sees it. And when your frequency raises and your expand, your consciousness expands, you all of a sudden, like 
don't, I'm not triggered by anyone. Like there is no one that can make me feel anything I don't want to feel like maybe except for the exception of Breezy and my son. Um, but like nobody else can make me feel anything like de- especially not the government, especially not the public health officials that are the most unhealthy people in the world. Right. Like there's just no, uh, and I remember like this all started, this really started to happen during the pandemic. I remember like we would be at home and I, we'd be like, this doesn't feel right anymore. Like th- there's just something that like, doesn't feel like this is in our best interest. And so like as a family during that time, like we really did like what was right for our family. And we, I mean, I didn't care what anyone else was doing with their family. We just did what was right with our family and didn't really care if anybody else had a problem with that. Um, I started to see other people's projections. Like if somebody else was feeling scared and fearful, that would project outward as like anger and frustration and, that was fine. Like I became like very unbothered by that. How that's really been great in my business is I started to really stay in my lane. Like in my business, I stay in my lane. I don't care what other people are doing in business. Like I think that there is room for everyone. I think that we are all running this like race of life. And if the goal is expansion of consciousness and like higher vibration amongst the collective, then it doesn't matter if I'm running and you're jogging and that person is sprinting. None of that matters. What matters is that we are all moving forward. And I think distraction is actually the killer. And there is so much distraction, right? The government, like the media, the like all of these like powers that be, it's all about distraction, right? It's all distraction. And so if we're all focused on the distractions, then we're not moving forward. And so my goal is like, I'm going to run my race. I'm going to let you run your race and you're going to run your race. And like, I'll, I'll inspire and attract the people that I'm supposed to, you'll do the same. And that person will do the same. And all of that's fine. As long as we're moving forward. The problem is like, we got like this guy over here being like, that is the only way to do it. You can only sprint. Sprinting is the only way. If you're not sprinting, you're a horrible person. Then you got the person over here being like, well, actually crawling is the right option. And if you're not crawling, then you are a horrible person and you know, whatever. And then everybody in the middle is like, okay, but should I be sprinting or should I be jogging? Like, I don't understand getting really confused and then therefore distracted. And then we're all not moving forward, which is so silly to me. Like I just, I just stay in my lane. And I'm like, I'm not here for everyone. Like not everyone has to agree with me. Not everyone has to believe what I believe and that's okay. And what was really interesting when I started to do this was like the people that were not there that really had a problem or like, you know, it's like, and when I say like people have a problem with it, people don't have a problem with it. What they're reflecting to you is their deep desire to have that level of freedom inside of their body. Like that's what people are reflecting outward. And it's coming out as like an attack. It's coming out as like anger. It's coming out as like, you know, these horrible things. But ultimately if somebody is like calling you certain names or like attacking you on the internet for the choices that you're making, they're probably doing it because they're what they're reflecting to you is a deep desire to have that level of freedom within themselves. Even if what they, even if what you're doing is not what they would do, it's the freedom that you have in doing the things that you do that people get really triggered by if they're not in that same space. And so in my business, I started to notice like, oh, people are triggered by this. And like, that would not affect me, but it would just be, I observed a lot when I started to break that matrix of like being in it with everyone and kind of instead just being like, almost like if you were, had a bird's eye perspective, like, oh wow. So that's happening. That's interesting. That's definitely, I wish people could see X, Y, and Z instead. Um, and so that's, it was actually, that's when my business really started to grow is when I really broke the matrix and I stopped trying to like, please everyone. I stopped trying to be like a virtue signaler or I stopped trying to like get everybody to see my perspective or try to like enroll everyone in like what I was doing. Like when I really stopped doing that, that's, that's when my business really started to grow. So probably like breaking the matrix was probably the best thing I've done so far. And then, um, the, I'll share one more. Another thing that like really started to happen when I raised my frequency is like all of a sudden you start making these like friends, like you start making friends with people that you feel like you have known forever. Like, and I call it 
you find your soul family, you know, like I believe our souls travel together. I like past lives, all the things, but when you start to expand your consciousness and like raise your frequency in that way, you really start to meet people that like, maybe you just met them, but you feel like you know everything about them. Like you become instantly close. And that's been really awesome because you attract that, right? Like it's the law of attraction. You like your vibe What's this thing. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Like that's absolutely true. And when I started to like raise my frequency, I started to like meet people who were doing the same thing and they were thinking the same way and they were feeling the same way. And it just felt like I knew these people forever. And so it's like, I've made friends in the last three years that I literally have known for less than five years, but I feel like I've known my whole life. Like I'm closer to them than I have been with anyone else, like business colleagues, like mentors, uh, people that I look up to, just people that I work with, people that I interact with, some good friends. Like it's just been a really cool experience. And I think that really starts to happen when you raise your frequency. It's like all of a sudden your frequency attunes with the people that like you actually want. So like I'm, I said the other day on my Instagram, I was like, yeah, I don't, it's not that I don't hang out with people who have nine to five jobs because like, I definitely do have friends that have nine to five jobs, but I also, I don't attract a lot of them. So a lot of the people that I know that have like nine to five jobs, I've known them for a while and I just like love them because they're my, they're my, they've been my friends forever. But like a lot of the people that I meet now are like creative thinkers and they're world shifters and they're, you know, entrepreneurs and they're trying to like do something different and be something different. And they're not, you know, their decisions are not dependent on what the government says they should do. It like, it's been a really, really cool. That's been probably one of the coolest thing that's happened as I like have raised my frequency. So anyway, this is why like when I say that I focus, like when I coach you and if you jump into my programs and a lot of my clients can tell you, like I don't just focus on strategy. Like a lot of the work I do is based in human design and energetics. And when I say energetics, I mean this kind of stuff. I We talk about these triggers. We talk about how we're a mirror for everyone. Like the law of mirrors, like we are all mirrors of each other. And like what I project out is what's being mirrored back to me by the people around me. And same as you, like whatever you like lack, you're going to project that outward and that's, what's going to be mirrored back to you. And it's just, it's, it's once you really start to understand that, like you can really grow your business in such a more profound way. You can grow your life in a more profound way. When you start to like realize your boundaries and you start to realize like your frequency, you, you no longer like, you no longer care what other people are doing and you ultimately can build a more successful brand that way. So I hope this was helpful. I will be in the desert this weekend, just living my best life, listening to country music, completely sober. Um, and it'll be interesting because we will for sure find other sober people because that's what you attract. And if you have any questions about this, you can always come find me on Instagram, Danielle underscore on the daily. I don't talk about this like a lot, but it's, it is like the very essence of like who I am as a coach and who I am as a leader and a mentor. And so I thought we'd do an episode about it because I'm heading into festivals season. Anyway, love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.